Welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. Join Janet and her friends as they gather at the intersection of consciousness and self-experience, what being consciousness in human form is all about. Access heart-centered awareness with them and feel the difference in the moment that will last a lifetime. And welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. I'm your host, Janet Barrett. Every episode, usually a friend and I will consider what life seems to be about. We meet in heart-centered awareness and explore the intersections of consciousness and self. I look to include some elements that cover a touch of the breadth of diversity that we hold in being present. Who knows what part you may resonate to. If you are joining us for the first time, or if you've been enjoying the other episodes, this is your time to unwind, tune in, and be with us in being present. The part of you, your essence, your higher self, your connection as consciousness, will enjoy the focus. What you think is real will soften, and new possibilities and ways of looking at your stuff will be present right in the moment. It can totally change your driving experience. Or you may just relax and zone out, and some will immerse themselves in being. Wisdom is timeless. Where certain practices can use ritual to create space, ours here is simple. Take this moment right now to just shift in your awareness of being in your day. Stop in your mind. Take a breath. Feel your heartbeat. And just slide into the stage of neutral. Neutral is a great space to be in. It is the shortest connection to any direction. And that is a great metaphor for essence and consciousness, heart-centered awareness, the field of unified consciousness. This is a neutral space full of potential and possibilities that are present always, usually just out of awareness, but not for the next hour. Mind takes center stage in daily life. It holds our blend of thinking and feelings at in any one moment and the resulting patterns of behavior. It seemingly dictates everything. My delight is sharing with you that much more is available when you hold awareness of what lies within our sense that we call self with the mind and body. Those resulting behaviors can be different. You will feel it here with us. Notice right now what is taking place for you. Today's episode is all about consciousness and thinking that comes from heart, not monkey mind. It is thinking that comes from our intuitive awareness as essence in the field of unified consciousness. From this space, there is no validation, no verification, no reason, no justification, no persuading, no obligation, no burden in being alive. How can I call this thinking if there are none of these conditions to contend with? What happens to mind when it has no biases or stories to perpetrate? What would it be like to enjoy a relaxed state of mind, open to experience? To help us do this and to know this state better, we're going to join in with hearts from under the surface of our surrounding oceans and then in the realm of whale and dolphin senses and being. My friend Anne Gordon is a marine life biologist and behaviorist. She offers us her passion and awareness and being when we swim with the dolphins, little fishies, and really big whales. What is it like living from within a state of no story, no past, no future? just right now? What can their framework offer us in shared awareness? Can you feel yourself shifting gears a bit on our journey together? To help us continue on relaxing, my husband Tom's meditation this episode is Just Because You Can Think Doesn't Mean You Always Should from his extensive archive at Interlude and Internet Retreat. So continue relaxing and listen in and feel your deepening state. Just because you can think, it doesn't mean you always should. Our species was optimistically named Homo sapiens, meaning wise human. Our wisdom is debatable, but thinking is clearly a characteristic of our species. Some of our thinking is wise, 
some as otherwise. We think as a way of being in the world. Other species are more inclined to be without all the analysis. Lacking the defenses and weapons inherited by most other animals, our species has gotten along by using our wits. This strategy has worked marvelously well in increasing our numbers. It has also become something like an addiction. Unless we are taught how, we tend not to stop thinking. We have the ability to reason, and that comes in handy. Reason enables us to figure things out. Think of Socrates and Plato, superstars in the realm of reason. When you read their thoughts, you have the thought, these guys could really think. Their rational capacity puts most of us to shame. Still, from the vantage point of the 21st century, we can assess their thoughts and be pretty sure that they got some things wrong. Sometimes the foundation upon which a beautiful philosophical premise was built was flawed. The capacity to reason is a beautiful thing, and it's not the only valid use of the mind. Arguably, our society would be better off if we paid more attention to reason. It's a necessary tool, like a plow is a tool. Farmers use a plow to grow food. Thank goodness that they do. Or perhaps thank reason that has allowed farmers to improve plows over the millennia. Farmers do at some point stop plowing. After sowing the seed, they no longer plow. Sometime it's good to set aside the thinking faculty, too. Let the plant grow. Let the mind settle. When we pause from the habitual judging, criticizing, planning, worrying, remembering, regretting that makes up much of our thinking, we can shift into a state beyond correct and incorrect. It breaks us free from the fear, anger, and shame-based emotions. A mind uncluttered with preconceptions is open to clear perception and responsiveness. We may move from thinking to knowing, from reasoning to wisdom. Don't worry, you won't stop thinking. You may take a break from it, but you'll never stop the habit for long. It's what we do. Sometimes, leave off the thinking. Just be for a while. Observe that you have been thinking and let it go. Allow your mind to settle down. Pick somewhere to place your attention, your breath, for instance, and remember to bring it back there when it drifts off. Or don't try to hold your attention anywhere in particular. Just be open. Just open your senses to whatever comes and practice not holding on to any particular perception or thought. Be without judging or planning. Thoughts will arise, but observe them without holding on to them or trying to link them together. Rest in the place of knowing beyond thought. It is so easy to judge something that looks different. It is important to remember that just because something looks different, the same principles common to all living organisms are working to different degrees. The human animal who lives with other living creatures may tend to forget that consciousness is present at all times. So our first word is animal. A living organism that feeds on organic matter typically having specialized sense organs and nervous system and able to respond rapidly to stimuli. Includes every living thing, pretty much, I would think. Humans, rabbits, and seahorses, and everything else. Now, mammals are vertebrate animals that nurse their young with their mother's milk. The cetacea are one of the most distinctive and highly specialized orders of mammals. There are close to 80 different species. Whales come in two varieties, with teeth and no teeth. Dolphins are toothed whales, and the largest dolphin is the orca, generally mistaken for a whale due to its name killer whale. A related family to dolphins are porpoises. And another word Ann and I mention is notice. 
Notice his keying into our essence essence. So, <laughs> that's hard to say. Essence senses. We are open to information coming in from our physical and non-physical senses. You must be present in the moment, free of story, to notice without judgment. <laughs> few years ago when we were both head booths at a Body, Mind, and Spirit Expo in Portland, Oregon. I enjoyed our short conversation then, and we invited her to be a guest on our other podcast, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I was so struck by the dynamic of the blue whale, the largest whale in the world, with a heart the size of a Volkswagen Beetle automobile. There was just such a sense of timeliness being present of no story. It was deeply moving, to say the least, <laughs> and something that deeply enriched my own sense of being in the field of unified consciousness. I knew when I was putting this podcast together that I wanted to include Anne and that wonderful awareness of heart that she brings to us through her marine friends. Now, Anne grew up boating in the San Juan Islands in the Pacific Northwest of the USA and remember seeing Orca while passing by as she did her homework on the beach near her childhood home in Olympia, Washington. She is a biology major with a minor in animal behavior and has worked as a zookeeper at Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo and trained wild animals to present in school assemblies teaching wildlife appreciation and respect. She's also trained animals, both wild and domestic, for the TV and film industry for over 20 years. And now lives in Panama and is married to an indigenous man from the Embera tribe, Otnil Barragon, whose family still lives in traditional villages in the jungles of Panama. She conducts tours to the Embera village to meet her family, whom she says live in true unity community and have the quality of life the rest of the world is searching for. Anne is a certified practitioner of dolphin energy healing, a deeply respectful form of energetic healing, and she also conducts humpback whale and dolphin swim tours in Panama, which is blessed with year-round dolphins and humpback whale migrations from both the southern and northern hemispheres. She also conducts five days whale and dolphin wisdom retreats in the Pearl Islands of Panama. During her years spent with the humpback whales, she has developed a close and deep spiritual connection with them and considers them a very important part of her soul family. In fact, the humpback whales gave her a white humpback whale light body and they call her Walking Whale. Anne loves to lead guided meditations to help others open their own spiritual and personal connection with the whales and dolphins. She enjoys observing behavior and sharing her knowledge, passion, and love of the cetaceans with others. Hello, Anne. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you are in Panama as we speak right now? That is correct. I am. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. And I want to invite our audience, wherever our listeners may be around the world or in their time zone, whatever that might be, to join us in what we call heart-centered awareness. And that we're going to start from that state because there's. I've been so looking forward to you sh- coming on the show because of your great depth of it and understanding and appreciation of what consciousness is. So everyone, just take a moment and breathe. That's There you go. And just allow yourself to let go of the day and whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been listening to. And as a continuance of the probably the meditation before, because we're recording this um, out of sequence, so we're going to appreciate all those variables. And just allow yourself to join Anne and I here. So there's a breath. And in our heart resonance, we can feel the physical heart. And we'll really get into this today with Anne. So notice your physical heart. It's about the size of your fist. And appreciate it. It is the symbol that you are alive. 
And then notice the emotional terrain, right? Second meaning of heart. We always associate it with feelings. And sometimes we like them and sometimes we don't. And none of that is important. Right now, you just want to notice that you have emotions and wherever your comfort is with that. And notice that that's just feelings and you've got more than one running and... If you could notice them and be okay with them, we'll just move to that place. What that's like. And then the third meaning of heart is always core, essence of all. And this is the core of consciousness, which enfolds, everything enfolds into. It holds everything. It is the expansive. So in just noticing what it's like to allow yourself to recognize that essence within yourself there we go there we go so let that be real it is real in our reality and we're going to have a wonderful ride here under and above the waves today with Ann so what you noticing Ann that was really really lovely thank you And just really brought me into to being present. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And that and just touching into my heart and that the heart besides above and beyond all that you just described is it's kind of it's like a metaphorical center of our soul. Okay, got it. I got got you there. It's it's like that's where it's where we feel it's where we feel deeply it's where we feel love Mm -hmm. and and that deep deep unconditional love that we all strive for that Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it whether it's god or universe or or goddess or spirit (laughs) that that is the that's the be all end all that's what everybody's searching for is to be deeply connected mm-hmm. embody and receive unconditional love so the yeah. heart represents all of that this huge expansiveness and in in and in, in again in a, above and beyond everything you mentioned so it's like it's like the doorway to our soul and to reaching that enlightenment, that that higher level that we're all looking for. Totally. Got it. Notice, everyone, how deep this is going. The joy that Anne brings and shares with us, when I had her on our other sh- my other show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, was the awareness when you are playing in the field of consciousness with marine life like she does Mm -hmm. and she has personal experiences of blue whales and which is the largest mammal in the world and a heart that's the size of a vw bug which i mentioned and and yours is the size of your palm And when you're in that state, what I was so struck with was just how there was no story. There was just being. Mm -hmm. And then your thinking comes from just being, not from your mind, not from your stories, not mindsets. Mm -hmm. And so you brought such, and you bring now, because we can feel it, that deep appreciation for just being right Right. yeah yeah in our human lives in our daily lives the average human lives in the past and the future Mm -hmm. yeah right so rarely in the present moment Mm -hmm. and and as you mentioned i spend a lot of time that's what i do is is taking people out to be with the dolphins and whales, both physically and spiritually connected. Mm. But even if you're not spiritually aware, you feel something. (laughs) You feel something. And when there's a dolphin or a whale in front of the boat or you see them from the beach, Mm -hmm. it is literally impossible to think of anything else. (laughs) You're just instantly brought into that present moment. And so that's this beautiful gift that the cetaceans, the dolphin whale family, give to us 
when we are able to see them, to bring us right into that present moment. And, and it's amazing to see what happens when people are given that gift because I see them joy, bring joy, instant joy. It's like they get very childlike and playful. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they even burst into song and usually really <laughs> silly, fun, you know, goofy songs like they were saying mm-hmm. as a kid. And it's just beautiful when people can drop into that present moment and let go of the trappings of the past and the future and that, that huma- human essence. Well, you know, we're all, we all experience life differently. We experience mm-hmm. consciousness differently. We just experience differently. It's unique to each of us. And there are those common places. That our essence, whatever we want to call it, soul, God, you know, wh- whatever our framework is, that is common to all of us. And what you're, you've just, you're, um, not demonstrated, but what you've articulated is how that is in everything around us. And if you allow yourself to take the time to notice and relax into, okay, this is, this is not what I think I am. It is what I find myself to be in this moment with this creature. Right, right. And you just go there Mm -hmm. and what it's like to be able to go there to give ourselves permission to to go there and the whole point of this podcast is to bring people into different awarenesses of what is already within themselves and all the variable different ways that we can talk about anything and how in unique to each of our viewpoints is also the common which is what we in what we share in that we are much more than what we seem we are we are much less than what we think we are and you you have the joy i'm sure it must be just full of laughter all all along the way about god laughing state of being with animals that don't have our bias And I don't know how much of bias there is in a whale or a dolphin or how much thinking. And as I was thinking about that, as I was contemplating that and realizing, well, of course they think they're sentient beings. And it's just often probably on a different different level vibration than what I would consider thinking. But there's thought going on here. And we are fooling ourselves and we're willfully blinding ourselves to that reality. We yes, think absolutely. It. There's such a human-centric way of thinking. Mm-hmm. That if, for example, you know, scientists claim, you know, human just assume humans are the smartest beings on the planet. <laughs> yeah, right. And and that all other intelligence measures that they've used over years have to compare the yeah. other animal species to the human scale. Uh-huh. Well, that of course we're gonna appear the smartest. In the human scale, <laughs> yes. but in the chimpanzee scale or the whale scale or the dolphin scale, we're going to seem pretty darn stupid um, <laughs> because we don't think the way they think and we can't do what they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but the beauty is that, I mean, humans have been on this planet for about 250,000 uh, years, as opposed to dolphins and whales who have been here for 30 million years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, did you hear that? We're Johnny come lately here. <laughs> I, I always say, and I always get this sense because I spend a lot of time in in meditation and in communication uh-huh. with the dolphins and whales that they're so gracious and uh-huh. they look at us as toddlers. <laughs> so imagine if a two-year-old that you're hanging out with yeah. Yeah. has a temper tantrum we generally don't get mad because we just know that they don't have the skills to figure out how to deal with life circumstances. Ah, now, and that means that you're 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 perceiving an attitude from from dolphins and whales about humans, and I and I find that funny because I I can certainly not say yes or no to that. So explain where that awareness comes to you. <laughs> In their sure. compassionate, non-judgmental place. 
Right. Yeah, right. I mean, we're just <laughs> we're just like stumbling around to them, right? Yeah, we're just trying. We're just bumbling our way around trying yeah. to get this thing figured out, making a whole heck of a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and just like a parent loves their two year old in the middle of a temper tantrum, they love and hold space for us to learn and figure right. it out. Right. So where, how do I come by that line of thinking is that I have been spiritually connected and started opening my cetacean connection since around uh, the end of 1999. So I've had a lot of years of medit- almost 20 years. Yeah, right. Yeah, of, yeah, exactly. Of meditation, of performing dolphin energy healing sessions in mm. which. I receive really clear visions and messages for my Mm -hmm. clients from the dolphins, as well as I'll sit down. I I send out a weekly newsletter and I just sit down and say, okay, what do you guys want to share with (laughs) us? And I don't have, sometimes I have a question or sometimes I have no clue. And usually it's, it'll be clear to me which species pops in, whether it's a sperm mm-hmm. whale or a blue whale or a mm-hmm. bottlenose dolphin or a spinning spinner, whatever, um, comes in and shares with me uh, on whatever topic they choose about us humans and, uh, and helping us and things we need to learn. So it comes from years and years and years of, of, tapping in and receiving their wisdom their words so um so just so i can be clear for people because Mm -hmm. what you what you're uh, articulating is so fascinating i don't know that i would have that reference and what i would and i certainly appreciate yours for listeners who maybe do groove on the on the cetacean how do you pronounce that cetacean 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 wavelengths right Mm -hmm. that those are vibrations as all of us we have an ability we have an inherent range a natural range of being able to notice vibrations and resonances and what you're talking about is you have a particular ability to Mm -hmm. access that range and you get information and whether it's in words or forms or taste or thought however it might come you have the that ability to pay attention to it you have the ability to give it credence you have the ability to allow it well if this could be real what would that be like Mm -hmm. and you've invited yourself to that place and i want to offer that awareness to our listeners out there who maybe are like and the other ones are going oh yeah thank you for confirming (laughs) you know i mean we're all at different places in this spectrum and just appreciating what what Anne is sharing about and she's coming from very practical experience this is the way she feels this is the way she experiences and interprets information and it may be just a little bit beyond where you are but it that has nothing to do with anything that is where she's at And we get to say, wow, how neat. And, you know, I hear about people going on dolphin tours and retreats, and you're going to tell us about that uh, by the time we get done here. Everybody loves that, right? I don't know anyone who who goes looking for that who doesn't say, oh, I want to go look at that, right? They want to experience what you're describing. Um, I don't think you probably get a lot of people (laughs) going – well, okay, fine. They may not know why they're going, but they wind up having their experience if they allow themselves to. So, wow, okay, so you get that in. Now, do you hear this as words, this language, or is this as resonance like God laughing to me, which, for instance, I realize is a vibration that my human ears are registering as laughter? How, what is that process for you? I, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, and I I do want to say for those who are not who are a little skeptical or not quite ready mm-hmm. to go there in their own lives, <laughs> when I first started learning the dolphin energy healing, I had no interest in it whatsoever. 
Okay. I wanted to learn about the dolphins. I wanted to learn what they had to teach me, but the healing part, not so much. Mm-hmm. And But I started playing around with it because I was taking a course that, that incorporated that aspect. And then I started playing around with it with friends. And what started happening is while I was doing a healing session, I would see in my mind mm-hmm. this steady visions of it was like a mind movie it was like the ultimate (laughs) daydreaming but i wasn't in control of it Mm -hmm, right and so i would see this these pictures and these images come up in my mind and not so much hear the words Mm -hmm. but have this knowing this comprehension Mm -hmm. of what these visions Mm -hmm. meant for Mm -hmm. my client and at first i was like really you know, some of them, they made no sense to me, mm-hmm. but when I would speak them to my client after the session, say, hey, by the way, this came up, and they would go, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. And that happened over and over and over again, the validation. So then I started trusting it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And... Mm-hmm. And really believing, I'm like, okay, there's something to this. So mm-hmm. I didn't believe it in the beginning either. But now, and you know, it's been so many years now, now I'm just so used to it. And and it's such a, it's such a gift. It's I, Well, so- you've moved it out of belief into being. Mm-hmm. Right. It is your truth. You, Absolutely. you're totally immersed in it. And it is part of your reality set. Right. right. It is exactly. your experience. So and that's the difference between being and believing. And we'll, we get into that in other episodes. Mm-hmm. So I do have other friends I know who describe who are animal communicators and they describe, you know, how, you know, a lot of information is pictures. But there's sometimes, you know, depending on the creature, there's a there's different ways of communication that you just have to allow yourself to be present to and be open to how the information will show up you can't have a closed mind at all about well i have to feel it in my left toe or i have to see it this way or something good so for those of you listening that maybe don't do animal communication or haven't had ann's experience or maybe you really have (laughs) <laughs> right. because you've got your dog right here you got your yeah. cat right there looking at you as we talk right. <laughs> yeah. and I have, I have to share how many times when I'm in group with people and over Zoom for instance and the cats and the dogs start to show up when we start doing the work exactly, they do, they love the energy absolutely <laughs> so, so what is it like being around animals creatures mammals or higher intelligence i guess we can call it that's somewhat that's mm-hmm. not not in a story what does that feel like just physically being in their presence it's oh man it's hard to describe but it's awe yeah. it's just the word awe comes mm-hmm. when when there's a whale it's just like oh my gosh it's just so it's hard to comprehend the dolphins are more relatable because they're about our size you know their mm-hmm. eyes are the same uh, about our size the, the they've got this perpetual smile and, and and you just like instantly pop into joy and get it but mm-hmm. then when the whales come it's like whoa this thing is huge mm-hmm. and it's but there's there's just genuine awe and just there's there's very rarely is there any fear it's just oh my gosh this thing and and then they they're just being in the presence the saw sheer size of it right right and they notice they start noticing how graceful it is and how it's in flow and how there's no effort or struggle and then they may do something like breach or slap their tail and show some personality or you see a baby riding on the back of his mother, cuddling with his mama, and you know, then you can relate. You start, oh wow, look, you know, and and what I found is just by being in the presence of whales for for more than a day, like on on my retreats, we do five days out with the whales. Mm-hmm. That it just being in their presence without any conscious thought on anybody's part 
is that it just gently, beautifully releases emotions and limiting beliefs that no longer serve you just by being with them. So what you're describing has a lot to do with size. And I mean not only size in the sense of, okay, something's bigger or it's the same size, but in the scope of what the connection is. Absolutely. And to feel how small we are in the spectrum of being and how large we are. Because all of this is, is within us, right? Mm-hmm. And and so at the same time, we're holding these two positions. And how I think humbling humanity is not necessarily hobbling humanity. Right. It is about putting us into a different alignment that we run the world and that I am the most important thing from an egocentric, egotistical space as opposed to an ego space about flow, that I know myself in a bigger context. Right. And and I don't what, – what I'm aware of is my, my perception or my feeling about marine life and what, what you're describing with these animals in particular is they're very family-oriented. They're very pod-oriented. They hang together. And so there is a family feeling that's present that's going to create certain references – Right. And depending upon where you are on the prey <laughs> levels, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and because, yes, dolphins go after other fish and kill them and do things as whales do. But it doesn't seem to be necessarily so much observed from a indiscriminate place that it's about killing to kill. It is about nurturing. It's about supporting life and, and those exchanges that happen and that's not to say that it doesn't happen. It's just we haven't observed that, I don't think, so much. Um, what is your awareness of all that? Wow, I could go in a million different directions on that <laughs> one. Um, let me start with saying that, yes, uh, the, the pod unit is all about unity community. Okay. And, and what I mean by that is that the, the pod extended family unit is the community, yet they can act as one as well as the individual uniquenesses are not lost within that. Okay, so r- real quick. So how big is a pod? Let's say if we're talking about dolphins. Is that an immediate family and then there's this extended family that you're discussing that's all part of the pod also? Or just how big are we talking about here? It depends on the species. I mean, there are okay. generally a family pod unit is anywhere from from a small pod is like five to seven and, you know, or up to, you know, 20, 25 is, is a st- average pod. But then they get what they call these super pods mm. where you get really extended families. And in certain parts of the world, like Southern California, you'll get mega pods of thousands of dolphins. Ah, together. Uh. And they're all tuning at once, aren't they? They're all... Right? In- it's all quantum entanglement Absolutely. for them. It's very clear and simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is because they... Here's they don't the have thing. any filter. Yeah. No. It, here's the thing about dolphins is, and, and whales as well, they have echolocation or sonar, as probably most of you know. Mm-hmm. But they, with that, they can. there's no secrets or lies because they can literally see inside the body... And see even the emotional state Mm. inside the body. So that if you're upset or sad, you hold your body differently than when you're relaxed and happy. And so they sense, they can see that, literally see it. And then they also communicate, as other animals do, in pictures. So Mm -hmm. when one dolphin is communicating to another dolphin in pictures... All the other dolphins around can also see that. So it's like a party line in the of the old days. That's right. That's right. It's like everyone's watching the same thing. Uh-huh. But the beauty is that that each individual and their specific 
personality is also mm -hmm. respected and honored. Okay. And rather than, okay, this is the way we're all going and you got to go this way. It, there's none of that. There's no force to it. It's all about, it's a choice. And that okay. choice is honored. Got it. Now, you opened up into emotions. So mm -hmm. we've been talking about thinking and, um, and mindset. And right. so here's the emotional tones that they also are resonating with and hold in awareness. So mm -hmm. go on more about the emotional stuff. That's sure. That's stuff. This is a good one. I love this one. Mm -hmm. So as we know, dolphins represent joy and play and they've got that per physical perpetual smile on their face. Mm -hmm. And you instantly feel joyful when you see them, even in a picture or a video. Uh -huh. However, they can feel emotions such as anger, frustration, sadness, deep grief. For Say, for example, one of their pod mates passes away mm -hmm. or is sick. They're concerned. They mm -hmm. feel all of those things. But there's actually a difference between happiness and mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. And happiness is, in, is a temporary state. Mm -hmm. It doesn't last very long. We have this great right. moment and we're laughing and we're having fun and we're happy. Mm -hmm. And then in the next moment we can be mm -hmm. really pissed off about something or upset. <laughs> right? Right. That's and still the, be a joyful person through all of it. But that's the thing. Yeah. That's the joy. The joy mm -hmm. is a choice. Mm -hmm. Joy is a decision you make to have as an underlying mm -hmm. permanent state, right. which is where the dolphins and the whales live mm -hmm. in that permanent state. And it doesn't mean that you cannot grieve, mm -hmm. be sad and express all those other emotions at the same time. But there's but with that really solid inner base of joy and a faith and a knowing that you'll always be able to come back to that, especially when you, uh, pardon the pun, dive deep into <laughs> yeah. your emotions. Because that's what the dolphins teach us is, is we humans, we're so bad about pushing away and pushing us right. aside our emotions. But if you, if you give yourself space to dive deep into those emotions and feel them fully, then they will process through much quicker than if you push them aside. And then you'll just automatically, once they've released themselves, come back to this deep sense of joy. Okay, you explained that so well. There would seem to be no judgment about having the emotion. Nope. And, and you're describing, and I hadn't thought of this, but in terms of, now, would you say that whales, okay, so whales and dolphins, okay, we see the happy, we see the joy, however we want to reference that. But you mentioned anger and frustration and these kind of emotions. Mm -hmm. So you you can register those with dolphins and, and marine life there? Yes, my original background is I studied biology and animal behavior in university and worked ah. as a zookeeper and trained animals for the film industry for many years. So I'm a keen observer of animal behavior um, before I got into the whole spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can read, not always 100%, of course, but mm -hmm. I can read the behavior and I can generally observe if... If there is frustration, if there is surprise, if there is fear, if the, you know, or if mm -hmm. there's if there's grief, I can generally read from the animal's physical behavior that there's not that state of, of perpetual happiness that we think they're always in. Well, that's one thing that you know humans can always go. Well, they don't, you know. You don't amorphize, you know, animals, you know, they don't have feelings, don't make them like humans and things like that. I probably used that word wrong, but pronounced it wrong. Um, but, you know, ascribing human emotions mm -hmm. to animals. Okay. And and I think th that has always so struck me as so flipping arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> and and what you're describing to me is that if we look at these in terms of vibrations, and mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. 
okay, at that vibration, you feel this, and at that vibration, you feel that. And it's one of those things to help that guides us and flavors being alive, right? And right. In, in form and not out of form is that we would think, and there you go, there's a mindset that, um, nah, they don't. And mm-hmm. the reality is, that is part of the prop challenge for people is to get back past their biases and open up to the realization that, okay, if your cat's looking at you, and I, I know anyone who has a pet, whether it's a bird, a ferret, or, you know, whatever it might be, they see the emotions. Now, there's certainly us wanting to see something in particular, so we have that set up, but there's also, you just have to watch an animal, and they'll tell you all kinds of things, and, and from an emotional resonance. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Scientifically, yes, it is. It is anthropomorphizing is the word you're trying to come <laughs> yeah, up with. Thank you. <laughs> is is. Yeah, that's not allowed in the scientific world. Right. right. Because it has to be proven, not <laughs> guessing. So, yeah. OK, that's fine. But what's happening more and more these days is science is actually opening up a bit because mm-hmm. there's been so many anecdotal cases mm-hmm. and with videos we can see you can right you can see when the dog is thrilled when they're only coming home <laughs> who's been like in the military for two years and you yeah think, oh right. my gosh this dog's going crazy there's uh-huh. no other way to read that than just yeah. sheer joy and excitement uh-huh. um and an emotional response an emotional response so science is, is that's different from this food it. <laughs> yeah, which is a whole lot different than it getting excited, you know, having, oh, yeah, it's time to eat. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're, science is is lightening up a bit on their stance. Um, and more and more people are opening up to realizing that animals have a consciousness. They think, they feel. It just, in a very, in a, sometimes a different way than us, but that their view and way of being is no no less mm-hmm. um, than ours is. It's just another way. Right. So everyone, just in this moment, just notice how you're resonating or not resonating or how, what you're noticing in being present with Anne, the whales, the dolphins, and her deep appreciation of life under the seas and above it. And where we are going now we don't set any particular direction in mind we're just being and what we're stimulating is new thought old thought different kinds of thoughts old feelings new feelings different kinds of feelings that we're sharing in this collective that we call consciousness and what it would be like to just, you can go to Anne and, and do one of her retreats and be with the whales and the dolphins, and she'll give us more about that. But you also maybe have a memory. And maybe, just notice in this moment, what if you were right there again? Because that's what's available to us. And Anne, who's so fortunate that she's created her reality to reflect this deep love she has, as we all do. Wherever you find yourself in your reality is what you've given your attention to. And just notice what feels too big, too small, how it's disorienting itself. What are you noticing, Anne, right in this moment? Yeah, that was beautiful. And what what popped in for me was the word potential. Mm, okay. And just seeing that as you were speaking is well, it's almost two. It's two things. It's the potential that mm-hmm. each and every one of us has to step in to the possibility mm-hmm. of whatever they want to create in their life, and that we are our own creators. That what we have around us, whether we like it or not, is yeah, it's our creation. creation. <laughs> and so the potential for what you can create 
is really exciting for each of you that are listening. It's like you can you think of, oh, she's so lucky she gets to spend all this time with the dolphins and whales. You know what? You can too. I, I created this out of nothing. Literally in where I live in Panama, I pioneered the entire whale watching industry. Nobody had ever done it before me. Mm. So if I can create it in this little country, Spanish speaking country, this this little, you know, white American girl from, yeah. you know, Seattle can create a whole industry. Mm-hmm. So can you. The, the, the possibilities are limitless, but it's also all about really dropping into your heart, bringing it back to the heart, dropping into what you are truly passionate about. And it may be something you're not even consciously aware of yet. Right. 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 So well, that's a potential as well. So, Anna, I'm struck by, I know how connected you are as consciousness to this whole, to, in your life, right? Mm-hmm. Your business expresses it. So in your business model, this is what it's designed around. In bringing everyone, bringing creature, whatever form it may be, into this state of awareness. Mm-hmm. And... Lots of businesses that are probably in the same kind of work like you are may or may not have that appreciation. It may be just a business. It may be something they happenstance on, right? All of us do our work through different models of whatever business will be for us. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to support, be very uh, conscious of with our audience is how this is who you are. This is your essence that you've connected to and then express. And in joining you, I can't, in one of your adventures, uh, with what you know as real in your world, could be anything less than awe. Uh-huh. Right? because And as you described that earlier about being in this state, in awe. Uh-huh. And I want to offer that awareness to all of you out there listening, wherever you are, that take this, expand this state, and whether you have the good fortune to join Anne in Panama at some point, or wherever you might be in the world, to just bring this awareness with you the next time you engage and see what happens. What if you do observe something different or unexpected or awe-inspiring or spectacular or, oh my God, what the hell was that kind of moment? Facebook is great, right? Social media is great for bringing all these wonderful things to us. And we all like them. Or there must be a reason why cats are the big deal. And, (laughs) you know, I'll have to send you the video I got recently of cats uh, who were trained to do tricks. And that was just amazing. America's Got Talent. Remind me to do that afterwards. And... Everything is subject to that potential in the moment. Yep. Yeah. And you you see it, and by the time you blink and you go to grab your friend, it's gone. It's different. It was just in that moment. Yep. And it's how we connect to that moment and go, oh, oh wow, oh, oh my gosh, and that that can change your life in that moment. It can. And there's no other witness. It's just you in that experience. Mm -hmm. And so I know you do these retreats all year round. So (laughs) we'll see. I I I do. I do. And I want to say that, you know, and on top of what you just said, which was so beautiful, but also that if you are going to join me, fabulous. And it, but if you're, (laughs) that doesn't work out, Mm -hmm. then just, and there are some people who, I want to use the word like filters. They look at their business yeah. in different ways. And and most people who run whale watching companies or dolphin tours, they do it in a way, they do it because they love being on the water, but they're not conscious of the wisdom and the spiritual connection. <laughs> yeah, that I, that's what I'm, yeah, right. right. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. they are, so just trust and feel into who you're drawn to. Whether that's me or somebody else, it doesn't matter to me. It's what's right for you. And I honor that. But I'd like you to just 
tap in instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to go with that one because it's convenient. Mm-hmm. But just be, take a moment and breathe into it and feel, is that the right trip for you? And if it is, great. Mm-hmm. And it's, it'll be perfect for you. And, but if there's some reservations, it's convenient, but, well, follow that, that, you know, that hesitation. And well, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah no, that's the truth about anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It is. It totally is. And I do. Yeah, I have my signature retreats here in Panama, but I've got retreats in Hawaii and Bimini in Mexico uh-huh. in uh-huh. all over the world. And they're all uh-huh. highly different species or different experiences. Some we get in the water and swim with some we're just boat based. It's all I like to offer as many opportunities as I can get to give you. And, and I've got to tell you, for me, it's I have a new word that represents my life purpose that just popped in this year. And that is empowerment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I am all about empowering you to step into your highest potential, to, mm-hmm. to self-realize and to give yourself this opportunity to be the best you can be and i'm here to create an avenue a sacred safe space through my my wisdom my retreats and the whales and the dolphins that can facilitate and give you this beautiful launch out into the world ah so that launch just notice the end for us if you would in the couple of minutes we have left what would what would that community of life like to us like us my listeners our listeners to know about life right in this moment just think about if every single person on earth was living their true purpose and connected deeply to their highest self. Just imagine how incredibly beautiful the world would be right now. That's quite a world. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. All right, sweetie. Did you have anything uh, that you wanted to leave us with about uh, retreats or or sure. can we just get get a hold of you at your beingwell.com or wh- what would you like to leave us with? Sure. I have, well, the website for my retreats is whalewisdomretreats.com. Okay. Retreats with an S, plural, whale wisdom retreats. And I'd like to give everybody who's listening a, a gift of a meditation that, and it's, it's kind of an, an introductory. If you just want to, if you love the dolphins and the whales, but you're not quite sure how to connect with them, mm-hmm. this is the perfect first step. Okay. And this is a, a guided meditation that I lead to introduce you and have you meet your personal dolphin spirit guide. Oh, wow. Okay. And just right. like angels, we all have one. Okay. So, and they're here to help us and assist us and support us and guide us. But it, just like angels, we have to ask. So uh, in meditation. That's what it always comes down to, doesn't it? It you does. You just have to ask. You just have to ask. <laughs> and so to access that meditation, uh, just go to dolphinspiritguide.com. And you will uh, get an instant download. So that you can download a link that you can download and listen to anytime you want to. And we'll have all that information on episode page, web page uh, for the podcast. And you can get all the links. You can get all of Anne's information that we can put there in a little tiny spot and <laughs> keep, keep you informed. And we're going to have to wrap it, hon. And Okay, so everybody, picture... A heart the size of a VW bug. That's right. The blue whale. Okay. Feel that blue whale presence as you go out into the world, mm-hmm. wherever that may be. And just notice life gets really simple. You mm-hmm. eat, you love, mm-hmm. you have fun, 
You eat, you love, you have fun, you have sex. I mean, <laughs> I think a little. Life's probably a little. <laughs> You have your neighbors, you have your family, everybody's got a personality, and it seems to all work. So thank you, Anne. Thank you so very, very much. You're so welcome. It's been an honor and a blessing to be with you again and to share share with your listeners. All right. Thanks. related poems and writings to our conversations this episode are songs. Anna's recorded several humpback whale songs that are available on SoundCloud. You can find the direct links to these on episode 7 podcast page at my website. Our consciousness cookies this episode include the following. For instance, on the planet Earth, man has always assumed that he was more intelligent than dolphins because he had achieved so much, the wheel, New York, wars, and so on, whilst all the dolphins had ever done was muck about in the water, having a good time. But conversely, the dolphins have always believed that they were far more intelligent than man for precisely the same reasons. Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 1979, Chapter 23. And here we finish with this one. Eventually, it may be possible for humans to speak with another species. I have come to this conclusion after careful consideration of evidence gained through my research experiments with dolphins. If new scientific developments are to be made in this direction, however, certain changes in our basic orientation and philosophy will be necessary. John Lilly, Man and Dolphin, 1961. Our journey this episode, this time around, was about what is it like to think from heart and not monkey mind. I personally have always enjoyed the term monkey mind for some reason. Monkey mind is a Buddhist term, meaning unsettled, restless, capricious, whimsical, fanciful, inconsistent, confused, indecisive, uncontrollable. Sounds like emotions are fluxing and shifting. It can be exciting and dramatic and filled with highs and lows in personality and being. And for some of us these days, we're stuck in these kinds of patternings. We can have some clinical terms to describe such conditions. It is a challenging way of thinking. It can create excitement, but it can also lead us into behaviors and feelings we don't like so much. It creates patterns that can make up our stories about life. Thinking is a given. We are all just wired differently, and we all have our practices that can center us, or we can be led around by the unsubtle quality of the monkey mind. What is it like to be present without judgment, without story, without emotions and dramatic sway? What is it be like to just be present, to feel the depth of the collective consciousness that is always present below the surface that comes up to breathe into our reality mindsets? What is it like to do our thinking from within the openness of heart, of connection as essence and consciousness? That is an entirely different sort of thing. That is what we can learn and enjoy from swimming with dolphins and being with whales. They are mammals like us in a highly distinctive and specialized order of mammals. They were once land animals that migrated to the water and adapted. Considering how we think most life came from the sea and developed, these guys went back to the sea. Interesting. They are equipped with emotions, sonar, sensory, and emotion locators, and live in family pods and traveling communities which can reach into the thousands. They are 30 million years old, and life is very different for them. Look one in the eye, and they recognize you in your deeper awareness. The you that has no story, the you free of your daily mindsets, they connect to your being. Everything and no thing fits within the core of consciousness. Our mammal neighbors found in our oceans offer clarity about this. I have never had the delight of swimming with dolphins personally. I have merged with the heart of a blue whale. When I enter heart-centered awareness, this is where we meet the whale and me. 
I can feel the absolute presence of no thing, no doing, only being in that heart the size of a Volkswagen Beetle automobile. My field awareness of consciousness deepens at this meeting place between me and the cessation world. There is only the breath of life. Monkey mind is quiet. friend Ann Gordon can be reached at several website addresses that you will find listed on the Episode 7 podcast page at my website www.janetandbeyond.com. There you will find the addresses for her Whale and Dolphin Wisdom Retreats, Embera Village Tours, Dolphin Energy Healing, and Whale Watching Panama. If you would enjoy meeting your own Dolphin Spirit Guide, Anne has invited you to receive your free meditation at DolphinSpiritGuide.com. Get all the details for all of these wonderful places to visit with her at the website page. Thank you for joining me here at Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. You can continue to join us every two weeks here on the CTR Network. You can post any questions or comments there or email me directly at JanetNBeyondPodcast.com. For more information about all the elements that make up each episode, they are on my podcast page at my website, www.JanetNBeyond.com. You will also find information there about my other podcast show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and about my work with clients. You can sign up to receive my regular weekly blog, Life in the Beyond, Journeys into Enlightenment. You will also find out about the Fuzzy Photons playground groups I offer. Live interactive space via Zoom video conferencing on your favorite device on Thursdays. If you're looking for other regular opportunities to sit in heart-centered awareness with others and explore life, you will find it here. You can follow each episode of this podcast series on my YouTube channel, Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Till the next time, feel the difference in this moment. It is real, and it can last a lifetime.